Hi, I'm Kitty. And I'm Jennifer. And we're the O'Neill Sisters, and we're going to show you how to mosaic a wine bottle. For this mosaic, we picked a beachy theme using seashells and pearls and oceany color tiles. We're going to show you everything you need to know to make this mosaic wine bottle, including how to arrange the tiles and shells and how to glue them onto the wine bottle. Then we're going to show you how to mix up your grout, and we've got some great tips for you so that you're sure to get the right consistency. And finally, we'll show you how to seal your mosaic with Mosaic Sealer. Let's get started. For materials, you need a wine bottle, and we chose a wine bottle that has high sides, and we removed the label. And then we have some shells. These will be featured in the mosaic design. We have a larger scallop shell, some little scallop shells, and some tiny conks. These were actually on a strand at the craft store. And then we have half pearl stickers. These are also from the craft store. We have lots of mosaic tiles that are square. They're 3 eighths of an inch. And some of them have some mirror as a backing and some have glitter as a backing, all in a, this sort of blue and aqua color story, very oceany. And we also have some Coke bottle ones. That's so pretty. And then we have some other tiles that are in the same color story, but they're even tinier. These are quarter inch tiles in the blues and greens. Then we added one more color. We added this peach because we thought it went nicely with the shells. To make the mosaic, we have 100% silicone. This is clear and we got it at the hardware store. We're going to use this like glue to attach the mosaic tiles to the wine bottle. We've also got mosaic grout. This is powdered grout and it's white and we got it at the craft store. And to seal our mosaic, when we're finished, we've got mosaic grout sealer. You'll also need a disposable container to mix the grout in, like this empty sour cream container. You'll need a putty knife. You'll need a stirring stick and a sponge. Other items you might use are a craft stick, a tablespoon, gloves, and a toothpick. We're ready to do our mosaic design, but you know the wine bottle's a little rolly here and we don't want it to roll around, so we're gonna show you a trick. We have a bean bag, literally a bag of beans, and you can just set that down and rest the bottle right on there. We don't want you to have to look at that bean bag. We want you to see our mosaic, so we're actually gonna cover it with craft paper just for the video. It definitely helps to have have it stable because you're going to be resting things, the tiles on it, so it needs to be stable. Exactly. So, Great. now we've got our wine bottle in place and we can get started with our design. So we've got our clear silicone adhesive here and we thought we would start with a big shell, yes. sort of as the focal point of our design. That's the so we've got our beautiful shell here. And what we're going to do is we're going to sort of center yes. this shell between the top and the bottom, but we're not going to think of this as the top. We're going to just start here. Yeah, kind of the part that's all on the same level. We're going to do most yeah. of the mosaic in here. So it's the flat part. Yeah, the flat So part. we're just going to eyeball it kind of, yeah. Kind right of around there. there is the center. Perfect. It doesn't need to be perfect. This is a artsy kind of mosaic. That's one of the very fun things about mosaics is you can just sort of tile as you go and yeah. make up the design. It doesn't have to be perfect. Does that look about center-ish? Yes, that looks good. And the shell um, isn't going to lay flat on there, but that's okay. We're going to get some grout underneath it when we exactly. grout to really hold it in place. The silicone glue is going to tack everything down, and then the grout's going to hold everything in place. Exactly. So next, I thought it might be good to start at the bottom or top. What do you think? Let's start at the bottom. Start at the bottom. Good. Because that way, if we started here and went this way, we might put a tile sort of halfway off the edge and then it wouldn't sit properly. Right. This way we can put the tiles right where we want them or the shells. Do you want to start with the shells? Yeah, let's start with the shells. This will give us a nice little sort of border and then we can work between the edge that we're going to do and the big shell. Yeah, so we'll do like a row of shells and then some tiles, maybe some more of the little scallopy shells and some more tiles. Should we do them in, the, in a line or kind of mix them up? I like them in a line. And you might have to hold them in place a little bit, but it's really not slipping that much. Yeah. It's pretty viscous, this silicone, um, the 100% clear silicone is pretty viscous. We've done this with glue before, and that's fine on a flat surface. Like if you're doing a picture frame, you can use different kinds of glue. But on a curved surface like this, it helps to have something more viscous, and that sets up 
more quickly. If they do slide, we'll just push them back. Yeah, exactly. So we've got a lot of tile colors to choose from. It seems like it might be nice to do the darkest colors at the bottom. Oh, that's a great idea. Let me hand you that. the glue. And this has a top side and a bottom side here. And I want to make sure I'm putting the glue on the bottom. The top is glass that looks through at some foil. So you just want to make sure with each tile that you use, check and see if it has a top and a bottom. Make sure you're putting the glue on the bottom side. And then it doesn't need very much. I'm just going to put a little, little smidge. A smidge. A smidge. Technical term. And then I'm going to run this up pretty close to the shells that are there. We want our grout lines to be pretty small for this so that we end up with not very much grout showing and it's more about showcasing the colorful tiles and shells. And then I want them to look a little wonky and yeah. not too... We don't want them rigid. I don't want this to look like a bathroom floor. Yeah. So you can just kind of wee wonker them yeah. as you go. So I'm just kind of... It looks a little more whimsical and playful mm -hmm. and... Here, I can hold that one if it wants that's to. Oh, actually, fine. it's staying. That's great. The tiles, I think because it has such a big flat surface area, yeah, it's, it's really grabbing. It, it's grabbing. And don't worry about getting glue on the bottle. It's not going to show. No, we're going to put grab all yeah. over. So there's a row of these pretty blue tiles. That looks so pretty already. So we have a we, we have a lot of that one. Do we want to do more? Yeah, of that let's do one? one more. It kind of weights it down a little bit. Or I yeah. don't know. We could switch to that glitter. Oh, either way, let's switch to the glittery one. Either Again, way. this glittery tiles glass on the top. And then there's glitter, like literally glued onto the back. So I want to make sure that the glue is on the back side and not on the front side. This is a good time to notice how big your grout lines are. So the grout line is the space between the tiles. And different grouts can cover a different amount of space. Our grout's very fine. Mm -hmm. And it wants a fine space. And we don't want this to look all grouty. And right. it'll say so on your package. It'll you read on the back of your grout how big a space it can span. It'll be like an eighth of an inch, which is what yeah. ours is. I'm just moving these around a little bit so they don't look oh, they so look fun. I think they're looking too too lined up. Too lined up. Yeah. They look a little more playful than that. And whatever tiles you have, you can just make up your design. And we're just trying to give you an idea of how we think about the design, like starting at the bottom so that it'll sit up right, right at the edge. And then sort of do it. We're doing kind of stripes and making them sort of blend from dark to light. You can use whatever kind of design idea you want. That's looking great. Okay. Very nice. What should we do next? Well, should we, should we do the same thing at the top? Come yeah, down? let's do that. Let's start at the top and come down because we saw that we didn't have enough room. So yeah. that's going to help us with our placement. Yeah. So let's start with the shells again at the top edge. How far up should I go? Like there? Does I that think seem that's right? Does that seem and then I can also enough? kind of measure a little bit. Does it need this to be will more? be a little bit shorter than okay. the bottom. That's okay. So we won't do as many stripes that's up here. Fine. But I think that that's That a good seems point. like where the top starts to dip yeah. a little bit. At the bottom here, we started with a mirror tile in the dark. So why don't we use the mirror tile in the light? Yeah, that's at nice. At the top. That'll visually make it heavier at the bottom yeah. there. So I'll just do a row of those. And yeah. again, they're not going to be super straight. Oops. It's fun to take something like a mosaic or a, a wine bottle and do a mosaic on it because it's, you know, it's just going to the recycle. Yeah, you were just going to toss it anyway. Yeah. And we've seen mosaic wine bottles like in gardens and things. They're really a cute little fun. decoration. So this pretty much sets what our pattern will be that we'll use to go all the way around the back of the wine bottle. Yeah, so we're just going to continue these shells all the way around and then this color and those two little stripes and the shells, just like we have here, but yes. all the way around. Except for where this large scallop is. So we just need to decide what we want to put in between this row of Coke glass and this one. And we have this little tiny peach of blue ones. Yeah, these are so pretty. Why don't we fill in? Why don't we make like a little sea of these Coke bottle ones, but put some yes. of these peachy Mix ones these in. in the... In which the iridescent blue ones or the other little blue ones? I think the iridescent I ones. I like these things. Yeah. yeah, they've got a little iridescence on them. Yeah, they match that other kind. I'm and then do a peach guy. The, yeah. um, because the shell is already curved, we won't try to do like straight lines. We'll just make these kind of jaunty. Yeah, they can kind of be it? dancing around. Yes. I'll hand you that. Oh, that's great. 
So we'll wait for this to be pretty set up here before we rotate it because we don't want all these to slide off the side. But these are already set up down here. These are getting close. So we just wait for these guys to set up. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to rotate the wine bottle, continue these same stripes in this little pattern we invented. We're going to do it all the way around the wine bottle until the whole thing is covered with tiles. We finished gluing all the tiles onto our wine bottle. It looks so pretty. And now it's all dry and they're all on there securely. We did a double check after it cured to make sure none of them were going to come off while we're grouting. And now we're ready to mix up the grout. So we've got our powdered grout here and we read on our package that it says to use one part water to seven parts grout. But in our experience, you need more water than that. Yes. So we're going to start with a little more water than that. We've got a tablespoon. And we're just planning on mixing up a little bit of grout to work a section at a time. Yeah. So why don't we do three tablespoons of water to okay. start? Does that sound like yeah. a good place to start? We recommend putting the water in the in your mixing bowl first because when you add the powder, it might yes. splash all over. Yeah. And do you want to dry that yeah, off? Yeah, let me dry that off with a paper towel. Yes. Good idea. Paper towel is always handy to have. Yes, especially with mosaic projects. Yes. I'll keep that handy. So now we want to take our powder. So now we'll grout. do our seven tablespoons. Okay. So and if you were doing a different project, you can mix up any amount of grout, just do it in the same ratio. You could use seven quarter cups or you could yeah. use seven teaspoons if you were doing less. It is a good idea to mix a smaller amount because once you mix it, you'll only have 15 minutes to work with it while it's wet. So here is number seven. Very good. So you want to mix here. with, we have a mixing stick or we have a putty knife. Which one do you want to mix with? Um, either one. Why don't I try the putty knife? Okay, try the putty knife. So you'll see that it might start out a little bit drier than we want. Actually, it's looking pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Okay. We, we usually have to add more water and add yeah. more grout. We might actually add a little more grout. Do you think that's too liquidy? No, I think, think that, looks, that pretty, looks pretty good. Maybe a half teaspoon okay. more of the grout. You want it to be the texture of a natural peanut butter, like a, it's, it's kind of runny, but not runny. Not runny, runny. runny. Yeah. It'll stand up on its own. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But definitely not dry, not crumbly. Right. It's, oh, very, it's, a, it's a sandy kind of material, and so you can tell if it's too crumbly. Let's see how that looks. That looks yes. better. That's very nice. Okay, good. So once your grout is mixed, you have about 15 minutes to work with it. Okay. And the way you work with it, this is a little bit surprising, but you take the grout. I'm going to rotate this and start on the tile part over here. And you put it right on top of your tiles. I know. It seems really funny. It seems like a terrible idea, doesn't it? Yeah. So you just, just put it right, right on. Right over. And we're starting on this side where it's just tiles because we don't actually want to put the grout directly on top of our shells. Right. It's okay on the pearls. We're going to dig those out. That's right. And then the putty knife is great for getting the grout on there, but nothing's better than these. Gloved hands are always Gloved your best hands. tool. So I'm just going to mush that grout around here. And I want to kind of get it on every side of every tile. Yeah, so Kitty's going you know, forward and back and up and down and just exactly. go all the way around. That's why it's, it is kind of nice to work with gloved hands for that reason. My gloves on tight. Because you can really feel where, um, yes. where the grout is and make sure it's in good. every crevice there. And then when it comes to the shell part, I don't want to go right over the shells. You can go right over the tiles because they clean right off. But the shells have a lot of grooves, and I think it'd be a lot of work to dig that out. Yeah, so we're going to save so ourselves for this, some time. I'm going to take a little bit, put it on my finger here, and I'm going to kind of shove it up under that shell to reinforce that connection, because the shell's sitting off of the glass a little bit at this point. Yeah, it only has a couple contact points yeah. um, with, with the bottle, so putting the grout up underneath that part that's exposed will help keep it in place. Yes. And then I have a craft stick here wipe that excess off over here. We're working on a piece of cardboard because it gets a little messy. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to use this to kind of even out the edge here. Poke a little bit under there. And you can use this throughout your project. Like over here on the pearls where the pearls are a little bit buried. You can dig them I out. I can kind of dig them out a little bit. And the, the main theme, the main idea behind grouting is you're going to cover the whole thing with grout like this. And then you're going to wipe the grout off the top, but leave the grout in between. 
So for the pearls, we don't want them buried. So we're going to dig those out a little bit. But and not don't too worry, much. And don't worry about the grout being on top of the tiles because our next step is going to be buffing. So yes. they're going to they're going to be beautiful and revealed yeah. and all of that. So you want to wipe enough off mm -hmm. that the buffing won't be hard. Yes. And a way to do that is okay. to use a damp sponge. So I got my sponge here. There you go. So damp sponge. Look at that. I can take it off the tops. This amount of haze is just fine. It's perfect. Because that'll buff off later easily. Do you want to do the other side? Yeah. So we're going to just work in little patches like this. That section's done. And it's okay to rot rotate it now because it's... It won't fall. It sticks it'll, on there. It'll stay in there. So, yeah. so I'm just going to smear some on there yeah. like that. Very nice. And I'm going to do the glove hand trick too. Yeah. I think that works the best. It works really well. And we chose a white grout for this project because it is like sand on a beach. It goes well with our sand beachy colors like our sea glass and the aquamarine and blue. But you can use any color grout you want and you can even tint grout with a little bit of acrylic paint to make the grout any color. The main idea or the thing we like to do is to choose a grout color that makes your tiles stand out. Yeah, so this white is really going to make these colors pop. Whereas if we, if we used like aqua or turquoise, and you might be tempted to do that, yeah. I think they'd blend in. Yeah, then you don't see the tiles as much. It all becomes sort of one color. Yeah. So it's better, we think, to contrast it a little bit. So we think the white's going to really pop that out. Oh, that's perfect. It's looking good. I don't want to get too much on the front of yeah. that shell, but there you go. But you do want it built up around the shell yeah. there. That's great. Get under this shell, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm going up. There was a little bit of air in there. And then I want it in between these tiles and that shell, but I don't want the shell covered up here, so I'm gonna dig the shell out a little bit. This is another reason why it's good to use um, sort of small batches of grout, because you can do this a little bit at a time and not feel rushed. Oh yeah. Because, you know, you do only have about 15 minutes before it starts getting stiff. So you can work a little bit at a time on a project like this. Some mosaic projects, it's just all tile and you just yeah. do the whole a thing. A table yeah. top. Yeah, yeah exactly. Just, Plop it all down on there. And go. Yeah. Smear it all around. You can do that in one big batch. Yeah. But with the shells, we just, we're saving ourselves time later. Yes. By um, not covering them up and having to buff them out later. Yeah. So I've got it going right up to the edge Good. of these tiles. Yeah. That's great. And then when I hit that with the sponge, it yeah. looks cool. Hit that with the sponge and then we can dig them out just a tiny bit. Well, yeah. actually the sponge might the sponge do it. The sponge does it. Yeah. Pretty good job. Still leaving yeah. a little bit of the grout in between because it's what's going to hold it all together. Yeah. But you do want to, you want your tiles to have a haze but not be buried. Yes. Because this is going to set up and if it's buried you'll have to excavate. A lot of elbow grease to get, yeah. it, to get it buffed. Let me have that cup of water please. Okay. I'm going to get a clean part of the sponge here. Do that. Don't want it too wet because we don't want to dampen the grout too much. No, you want it to stay the same consistency. Yeah. I'm trying to dig out those pearls a little bit. Nerp. That's doing it. That's doing it. There you go. Okay. Now we can do that Great. next section. Yeah, we'll do this I little lower section. Buried that one a little bit. Because it's a small little section, I'm going to use my fingers to pull out a little bit of the grout and kind of set it yeah. on top like that and work this way. Beautiful. And for these shells at the bottom, we want to work up to the shell. So I'm actually going to hold my thumb there to make sure that I don't push them off. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to just kind of pull the grout toward the edge of the shells That's like good. that. So she's filling in on top of those tiny shells. I'm trying not to get too much on the shells, yeah. but it's sort of working. And I'm going to smear it and see how that's doing. That looks good. Because we don't really, I don't know if we need any grout on the bottom, do we? To hold those in? I'm not sure. I don't think no, so. No, I'm thinking we don't. Mm -hmm. but, um, and then we should fill in with those yeah, in I between think, I there. I think we'll just let the shells be on their own at the bottom, yeah, like a little, let's do that little part. border. Pull that like that. That looks fantastic. And that should, that should stay. Yeah. Great. That's really nice. Is it falling off? Just and we tiny do bit. A little bit on the, <laughs> on the shells here. Yeah. And your sponge trick worked out pretty, pretty well. Maybe we use the, um, the oh, craft gosh. stick to stick to move it between that's a good idea between these little guys yeah so i can see there's glass showing between these okay, shells yeah you want to make sure that none of the glass of the wine bottle is showing through 
So I'm going to want grout covering all of that. Kind of pull it through like this without covering yeah. too much of the shell. That's great. So this is how we're just going to keep on working. We're going to fill in these sections, finish up here, fill this in just bit by bit, rotate until the whole thing is grouted. If we need to add, make, mix up more grout, we'll just mix up more grout, little batches at a time. Then we're going to let this set up for 30 minutes, not longer, no. and we're going to buff the top of those tiles. We finished grouting our whole wine bottle mosaic. It's looking pretty great. It's awesome. And we let it cure or dry for 30 minutes, just enough for this haze to dry and form on top of all the tiles. And now we're gonna buff those clean. This is when the magic happens. The buffing process takes a little bit of work, but it's so worth it. It's worth it. You can see what I'm using is just a paper towel. It's not even damp. And I'm just basically wiping the tops of the tiles off. I'm not digging between the tiles, no. just wiping them off. And you'll see the, the, a little haze might still be there, but you can do this in a couple sets. You can do it once yeah. and then wait a little bit and then do it again. We usually do, we wait 30 minutes after the first grouting, go over every tile this way, just taking that haze off. And then we'll check on it again in 30 minutes. And if the haze has formed again, we'll wipe that off. It's just that little bit of damp grout that causes that haze, but it's very easy to just brush it off. You can see it comes right off. It's looking really beautiful. So we're going to keep doing this, get the every single tile and, and all of our shells nice and buffed. Yes. And then we're going to let this dry overnight, and then we'll seal it, and we're almost done. We waited 24 hours for our grout to dry, and then we sealed our mosaic by painting a real thin layer of mosaic sealer all over the tiles and especially over the grout. Wow, it turned out so pretty. And remember, while you're working on your mosaic, if you have any questions at all or comments, just leave a note for us in the comment section and we'll reply. We're here to help. Happy crafting! Mm -hmm.